Your freelance career is a dance, this time on Career Opportunities. Helping to build the career you deserve. This is Career Opportunities for August 4th, 2014. Today's podcast is part of the Dog Days of Podcasting 30 Podcast in 30 Days Challenge. For more information on the Dog Days of Podcasting and to see everyone who's participating, visit dogdaysofpodcasting.com. There you'll find links to an RSS feed containing all the shows from all the participants. Again, dogdaysofpodcasting.com. Today's show, The Client Dance. Working with any client is a dance, or at least it should be. Dancing partners have to learn a lot about each other, how they move, where they move, how they communicate their moves, and working with any freelance client is much the same. Just as when you're learning to dance, there will be mistakes, missteps, and a few toes are sure to be stepped upon. It's part of the nature of learning and developing any relationship. Still, despite the difficulties, Freelancing and working with individual clients can be very rewarding. You have the ability to more directly affect the life and business of a client than you ever would in a larger, more corporate environment. You can develop personalized and unique solutions for their needs. You can also learn much about yourself, your work, and your own wants, needs, and desires. You find your likes, your dislikes, your preferences. You'll also learn what you do best, what you need to improve, and what you need to learn. It can sometimes feel like a harsh learning environment for you, but despite whatever stress you may feel, it will benefit you greatly. Sometimes the only way we come to understand our skills and expertise is being forced to exercise them. We have to try, and fail, and succeed to truly learn our own limits and where our interests lie. This is another part of the client dance. Many will come to you with one question, but that might lead to other questions in far-reaching areas of their life and business. With each question, you'll need to decide how much expertise you can bring to your answer, or sometimes, if you have any expertise at all. For example, in my new media work, I'm most comfortable working with the technology and the underlying philosophy of how new media can be used to improve a person's life, career, and business. Due to the nature of new media being used in all aspects of business, though, Clients will often start to ask me questions about sales and marketing, business plans, billing, pricing, and a host of other topics which are outside my usual areas of expertise. It's important for me to actively defer many of those questions elsewhere. In any client relationship, I want it to be very clear where my expertise lies. I might offer my personal opinions on these questions, but I'm always sure to preface my thoughts with the standard disclaimer, I am not a enter your expert's name here. It's not in my best interest, nor yours, to pretend expertise in something you don't have. In fact, it can greatly damage your relationship with a client if you do. Don't put yourself in the position to disappoint your client. Be honest and clear with them on the limits of your own expertise, and the client dance will be much easier and much more productive. Sure, you might feel a bit inadequate or fear that the client will think less of you, but I've found Over many years, people respect honesty in others, and it will far outweigh any perceived inadequacies. They'll see your honesty as respect and appreciate it more as your relationship grows. I never want people to feel I've taken advantage of them, and this honesty about my expertise is one way of avoiding such situations. This doesn't mean you don't still have a role with your client, though. I often become a translator of sorts between the client and another consultant. Often clients can't speak the language of a web designer or a programmer. Perhaps I couldn't help develop the programmer site for the client myself, but I can help them communicate their desires to these consultants and translate the consultant's technical talk into something the client can better understand. This focuses on one of my strengths instead of disappointing my client by claiming expertise that I don't have. If you're considering freelancing, I hope you'll see it, as I do, as a long and complicated dance. Starting the dance can be difficult and fraught with mistakes, but over time, you'll come to be better partners who can appreciate each other's movements and needs. It's at this level where the best work, the best products, the best lives are created. Do the client dance well, and you're well on the road to building the career you deserve. 
This has been Career Opportunities with Douglas E. Welch. You can find links to Career Opportunities, all my social media accounts, and everything else that I do at douglaselwelch.com. I'd love to hear what's happening in your career and any questions you might have. Contact me at career at welchright.com, post to our social media pages, add a comment on the website, or call our reader listener line at 818-804-5049. If you enjoy Career Opportunities, please subscribe to the blog and podcast, join our mailing list, and share links with your friends, family, and professional contacts. Each one of these helps to spread the word about Career Opportunities to others. Thanks for listening, and please join me for the next episode of Career Opportunities.